Hi, my name is Jerry, and I am a twin troller boat owner. Recently, Bob from Seminole, Florida contacted me, told me that when he picks up the tongue of his trailer, he hears water sloshing inside the hull of his boat. Well, this video is going to be about that, what he discovered on the boat that caused that, and how he fixed it. So stay tuned. You'll be able to see that too. You never know. You may have a similar problem. In the description below this video, there are links to most of the items used in many of my videos. They are there so you can locate them in case you are interested. Hi, Jerry. Bob again over here in Seminole, Florida. I noticed when picking up the tongue of my trailer with the twin trailer on it, I heard sloshing water from the port side. I pulled the port side pontoon drain plug and sucked out about three quarts of water, seawater, as I was in the intercoastal the last time I was out. I pulled the upper seat rail on the port side to see if the seal was damaged where the motor wires feed into the pontoon as water was splashing into the boat pretty good the last time out. Seal seemed fine. I even added compressed air via the drain plug and did not notice any air escaping around the seal. Now I'm making the assumption that water is getting by the motor mount and getting into the hull. I did watch your Need Some Love video the other day, but did not notice any weld cracking on the post attached to the plate. But I did notice the plate on the forward side appears to not sit flat to the boat hull. See the attached picture. I'm on the fence about pulling the plate, flattening and resealing it versus simply caulking the visible void. I would love your opinion. I also don't mind sharing this with the Twin Troller Facebook page if you think it's worthy. Thanks, Bob. I then replied to Bob, I conclude the same you do about water getting past the support bracket. I think sharing this with Facebook is something we should do once we make sure what the problem is and hopefully offer a suggestion to fix it. Do you use the twin troller in salt water? Did you try tasting the water to see if it is salt water or brackish? Do you store the twin troller outside where rainwater can possibly be the issue? I have had my seat tracks off in the past to install a reverse pitch prop that yours came standard with. I recognized that black sealant they used to be butyl seal tape or butyl sealant. I believe that is what they used on the motor bracket also because you can see the black substance in my Need Some Love video. If you finally decide to remove the motor bracket, I would use that butyl tape slash sealant to seal it better because it remains pliable and it is so waterproof. You can buy that in other places and on Amazon. I do not have the pontoon drain plugs on the sides of my twin troller. Mine is almost five years old and they did not have them back then. Could water be getting inside the hull that way somehow? Let me know what you decide to do. Jerry. Bob then writes, Thanks for your thoughts, Jerry. I do take the twin troller in both salt and fresh water. More salt in the last two to three months since I bought the Honda. It stays in my garage when not fishing, so no fishing in the rain I can recall. I did taste the water and am leaning towards brackish versus 100% salt water. So I'm guessing that this has been going on since day one, probably light use over the last 14 months when I purchased it. Three quarts of water is not a tremendous amount, but it would certainly add up over time. Thanks bunches for the beautiful links. I am now planning on pulling the plate and see what I can see. I'll keep you updated. 
Thanks, Bob. Bob later writes, Hi, Jerry. Well, upon further review, the motor plate connection looks pretty good. Took a bit of effort to remove as the butyl was sticking very well. I did notice that one of the weed guard screw holes fully penetrates the pontoon hull and I did not see any sign of a sealant. So I'm surmising that under pretty decent hydrostatic pressure, this small void over time will let water in. I also noticed that the embedded one quarter 20 nuts that hold the motor mount had no sealant as well. You can see slight effervescence, but this could just be surface deposits and not water penetration. One of these inserts looked like someone at the factory damaged it as it would spin when I tried removing the bolt. It also had a dab of butyl caulk on it, while the other five did not. No repairing this. I will simply plug with butyl and add two self-tapping stainless screws on either side of the damaged hull area when putting the motor plate back. Once I get everything resealed, I'll try to vacuum test with my shop vac via the side drain plug to see if there are any other voids. Bob. Jerry writes back, Bob, it is interesting to see the mounting bracket removed since I never did that before. Once you see if this worked to stop the leak, I bet Frank would be interested in seeing this when you get it all done. I will do a video on your journey when you get all this done, if that is okay with you. I will only use your first name like I do with everyone else, Jerry. Bob replies, Thanks again, Jerry. It was a job to remove the old butyl. Residual came up cleanly with mineral spirits. I went to a marine supply repair store in Largo, and they recommended elastomeric sealant meant for below the water line. Sticks very well to the twin troller plastic. I had to use mineral spirits again to clean up all around the install. I'm good with you posting a video and answering any questions you may have. Bob. This video has turned out to be fairly lengthy, so I'm going to break it up into two parts. You just primarily saw what the problem is, and in the next video you'll see mostly what the solution is and how he did this. So bear with me. Stay tuned to the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye now. So don't forget to subscribe or give me a thumbs up, click on the bell, share with your friends, or leave comments and questions below.